All right, so tonight I've got a uh, package here. Um, I know at least one of the things inside this package, possibly two, but I have no idea how many things are in here in particular. So uh, I've been told to see if I can't unbox this on camera. So here we go. What do you know? V2. We'll come back to that in a second. Hmm. <laughs> uh, ooh. Some stickers. I always like me some good stickers. All right, so this, um, this is a light meter that uh, I'm not going to use at all in this video, but I am going to take quite a few measurements and make a separate video on that. Um, more details on this later. But <laughs> uh, that's hilarious. Okay. Um, anyway, we've got right here V2. So as I'm sure you guys have seen some of my previous videos, I did a... Uh, this in a little bit so I can actually see the screen. Oh, there we go. Uh, I did a uh, some backlight kits on these uh, DMG consoles. Um, there were some issues. I ended up having to cut some traces, swap some wires around, and we got it going what I think pretty well. Uh, but it, as it turns out, the manufacturer went ahead and fixed it. So let's try that out. See how that goes. So in the case here, I believe we're going to find everything that was in the previous case. It's going to look the same even. Yeah. There's no visual identifier on these kits uh, to tell them apart. Uh-oh. Well, that's not good. My, uh... Potentiometer here on this one's broken. Well, that's a bummer. That's okay. We'll uh, we'll make it work. So I will come back. I need this board specifically, the little one. But we'll make everything else work here, and I'll see if I can't get this fixed. I don't know how that goes together though. So I guess let's uh, let's just use this console as a donor here. I even had a uh, brand, well, not brand new, but another one set aside for this, but I think this will be even more fun. All right, so let's see if we can't get this apart the right bit. I wonder how that happened with my potentiometer there. That's kind of a bummer. It might just be as simple as um, moving those tabs where they need to go and then bending the wheel back down. I just want to take this one apart so that I have a uh, have a reference what to look at. This is the one that I ended up doing the swap on the board itself. So, oh shoot. So that's not going to work here. I'll need to take apart my other one, or at least undo the changes that I made. Or swap it on the Game Boy 2. Because I did that. So yeah, these two boards should be identical, aside from the fact that I did the fix on this one. Uh, and this is soldered together. Eww, that's going to be rough. At least it'll make taking it apart nice and easy. Okay, now this should come out. Let's 
going on here? Oh, it's probably just stuck with the adhesive. Yeah. Okay. Actually, that can stay there. So this one, those are supposed to wrap up and around the wheel here. I might have to desolder that just to get the clearance I need. Maybe it's fine. Let's try it out. See what happens. Okay. Oh wait. I suppose we should try putting this together first. So this LCD doesn't have the insulation on the back of it. It shouldn't be a problem because on the back of this board is nothing that it can short out on. All This whole thing should be covered in solder mask, so there should, shouldn't be anything to short out on. But just in case, if you want to take a precaution. Uh, yes, hello. That goes in like that. This bale is a pain in the butt. It's very, uh, every single time feels like I'm going to break it, but just slow up and over and it'll close. That'll go right about there. This one goes just like that. this flip over like that and then that's that so this cable I don't know why but it looks shorter than the other one it's the same though I'm gonna use the original one just because it's already plugged in to half the console <laughs> Goes like that. Whoop. Pop the other two batteries in here. And excuse me while I grab a flash card. And if all goes well, hopefully everything works. And again, this console, this DMG is not swapped, it's completely stock boot it up here. So far so good. Where is... Oh, I just got my fingers all over that nice clean LCD. Alright, so we want... Demo... What is it? Gradient test? I think that's what it's called. How's that look? Okay, so this is the stock gradient. Um, as we can, as you might remember from the um, swapped V1, these ended up being swapped around. Let's see if my potentiometer works. So I got brightness control. I was a little bit concerned with how it was bent, but it looks like it just needed to be bent back. And if we click, uh oh, yeah potentiometer gets stuck. It is still s cycling, but I'll have to try and fix that up. All right, so this is the green palette, red palette, the olive palette. This one was my favorite here. Kill that. Oh, I'll just kill all these lights. Why the hell not? So 
So this is what we want to look at. Oh, now my finger's all sticky. If we can focus, there it goes. So this is one of the things that the uh, V2 fixed. Uh, so the color palettes themselves have been swapped around. So now we have light gray as light gray and dark gray as dark gray instead of vice versa. But the particular shades used have actually been swapped around so that there's better contrast between them. Personally, I think it looks a heck of a lot better. And then there we go, back to the default. So unfortunately as it is, I did end up getting a uh, faulty board here, at least with this potentiometer. Maybe I can, yeah, if I bend it back out, it works fine, but it won't fit like that. So I'm going to have to play with this, see if I can't get it tweaked just right so that it works just fine. And um, when, well, I'll be back in a moment and we'll try it. Actually, before I even go, let's reset this. We'll try one more thing. I don't think this has changed, but um, just in case, let's try out the uh, scrolling bar test and see how that works. So we'll do the one with the LCD reset. Of course, the protective layer is still on the LCD, so there's stickers and stuff. And you can see, very, there's no um, frame dropping and no tearing, except for that one single frame when the LCD does a reset command. Now, you can see right about where my finger is, there's a line appearing in the screen when it resets. Um, all things considered, this LCD kit seems to handle that test very well. The um, There is still a screen artifact, but this still handles that reset better than most other backlight kits and even better than some OEM screens. Um, so yeah, I... I mean, I, they, they solved my biggest complaint with this kit, so I think this is my new favorite kit here. Uh, that being said, though, I am going to go ahead and pause and see if I can't get this uh, potentiometer fixed and see what's going on with that, or potentiometer, rotary encoder fixed, and um, when we come back, we'll finish up with the install here and get that taken care of. No idea how much time I have to do this, but see if we can't get it done speedrun style. Um, this DMG backlight kit that I got had a semi-broken rotary encoder. Uh, when I pulled it out of the package here, it was canted up at an angle. And um, you can bend it back down, and it does work, but the clicky gets stuck when it's bent back down, and it's not going to fit in a case with it bent up like this. So... I want to see if I can't get it fixed. Now, originally I was going to try and do that off camera because it would just be so much quicker if I did. But I have a feeling um, that y'all probably want me to do it on camera. So let me, uh, let me try it out here. I'm going to end up desoldering this LED. So I'm just going to mark it so that I don't even have to use my brain when it comes time to reinstall it. But removal should be as easy as this. Oh no, is this lead-free solder? I think it is. Oh no, that's just an extra thick ground plane. Holy shit. So obviously this isn't a problem for their manufacturing, but as far as reworking the board goes, it's kind of hard to get the solder melted on that ground. Got to 
fingernail under it now, so I think we should be good. <sighs> Discord. There we go. Ow. Only burnt me a little bit. Hope I didn't ruin that. I might have. have to test that. Yeah, as you can see, there's no like thermal reliefs on that, so it's kind of rough. Okay, um, let's get my solder braid. Get that nice and fresh, so we can clean this up. Oh, and of course it's marked under there. That would have made my life easier had I known that beforehand. Oh well. And I know you can tell just by looking at the LED. I just... I'm just a dunce. And it's easier my way. What's going on? Why isn't this working? solder to this again just to make it easier to tell that it's melted having any luck tonight. All I'm trying to do is clear an LED hole of solder. Both my solder suckers are garbage. Yeah. I'm not getting anywhere with that. Let's try the braid again. Not getting anywhere with that either. Whatever. I'll come back to that. It's clearly not working. Let's see if we can't get this thing desoldered. So unfortunately, this is a board soldered to a board, which makes desoldering it. Ugh, oh, and that's a ground. Ugh. Oh. I think these are all grounds on this side. The grounds on this board have no thermal relief, so as soon as you touch the iron to it, it just soaks up all the heat and will not melt. I'm thinking. Maybe we can do it this way, though. Get one side lifted, go back and try the other side.
And aside from that last one, all the solder is lifted. We'll just leave that one for now. Do the other side. And there we go. Get this last one. Nice. So this is the part that's broken. Or at least not... I don't know what the hell happened here. I'm thinking I'm just going to try desoldering these tabs. Hell, maybe even clipping them off would be good enough. That's broken. Fish that out with tweezers or something. Alright, so I don't know what was going on with those tabs, but they were broken off. Not really sure how that happened. Hopefully it doesn't affect the long-term functionality of this thing. Alright, so now I gotta fish that thing out. It looks like it's stuck in the hole. Uh, need some tweezers! There are my tweezers! It's not the tweezers I wanted. That's the tweezers I wanted. Okay. Alright, so there's that. That's also broken. I don't know... I don't know how that happened, but it was like that in the package. I'm going to bend that down again, solder the back supports, I won't have any front supports, but the back supports are going to be actually soldered this time. I'm even going to go so far as to add more solder to them. Not something that should have to be done on new kits. If you get a kit that comes like this, your first instinct shouldn't be to take it apart. You should contact your vendor. Okay. That should be nice. Now I'm going to redo the joints on the back of this thing because I was bending around. Solder does not ta handle fatigue very well. I'll put some fresh stuff all over that. And boom, Bob Jonti. I just need to reattach this thing. And, uh, should be good to go. I should clean up these, huh? I think I need to file this thing out because of the extra solder that I added along the supports. Now it's thicker. So I'm going to take a couple minutes and file this. I'll be right back. All right, so after a few minutes of filing, I got, I got it to fit nicely. I didn't take off too much, just enough. Uh, when I added that extra solder on the uh, supports that hold this thing down, I think I ended up getting, uh, just ended up making it take up a little bit more room than it used to. But, 
fits in there nicely now. So let's solder this thing back down and call it day. So realistically, should go in there nice and easy. Just need to make sure that's actually flat and not shorting. And it is now. Okay. Probably should have checked that first. Yeah, because now it fits nicely. Okay. At least it's easy enough to put together. These four vias are all grounds. I could probably just leave them all shorted together with a big old chunk of solder. But I don't like how that looks, so I'm not going to do that. There we go. Oh, I should put the LED back in. Huh? Oh shoot, I don't think I soldered that in right. I think it's forward just a little bit too much. This adhesive on this part is awful. It's gross and it gets everywhere and it doesn't hold very well. I don't like it. All right, so I need to clear out that hole. Put this thing back in. Let's make sure I didn't cook it first. Where's the other probe? I think I did. With how bent this leg is, I'm not surprised. Yeah. Well, shit. That's my bad, but I guess we're putting in a new LED then. Do blue. Blue works for me. How 
How are both sides still full of solder? Oh, what the? F Never mind. Well, that side's clear. I don't think that side is going to clear. This would be so much easier if I could just get all the solder out of that hole. But it's just not working for me. For whatever reason. This is why having thermal reliefs on your solder joints is so helpful. Ugh. Still can't even get that through. Jesus. I'm tempted to just drill this thing out. Yeah, screw it. That's what I'm doing. I'll be back. Can't get the solder out of that hole, so I'm gonna use power tools. Beer be. All right, so in a method that I don't think anyone who does this for a living would approve of, I just drill the freaking hole where the hole is supposed to be, and we will solder it together that way. Before I even solder it, though, double check, make sure I didn't completely ruin it. I'm gonna plug it in, make sure it still works. And yeah, ta-da. So let me go ahead and solder that in. I'll do one pad, the positive side, just so I can get the positioning of the LED proper. Oh. Now let's try and do the other side. Flush. Ow. Hit me in the forehead. All right. That was relatively painless. 
get cotton swab. Let's clean this nasty thing up. And then we'll test it out. Hopefully, all is well. Suppose I really don't have to do this because you won't ever see this side. But. And look at that, good as new. Can't even tell that I totally botched that LED. All right, let's try it out. That is the worst place for my flush cutters. Let's make sure I didn't completely ruin it. Put this Game Boy back together, and we will uh, we'll do the actual install, the one I had planned. Okay. So where is? Screw it, I'll just use my tweezers. Or not. Apparently that doesn't work the way I wanted it to. Can my battery work? Yeah. Let's go down to gradient test. Oh. Apparently I managed to hit start or select or whatever. Come on. Start. Start, damn you. There it goes. I wanted the gradient, but this will do. So scrolling still works. Probably can't tell because of all these lights. So scrolling for brightness still works fine. And if I click, I can still cycle just fine. And it's not getting stuck anymore. And it's nice and flush. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, wrap this video up here. I need to take a break, let my phone cool down, and probably need to clear off the storage because I only had enough space for the one video and I'm gonna end up making two. And uh, when I come back, I guess we'll do the install in here and we'll go from there. Thanks for watching. Quick addendum, because I didn't notice this until I was uh, reviewing the footage, but um, the LED that I replaced didn't work. I actually ended up cooking that one too, so this is the third LED. Uh, I did test this one. It does work. I'm not going to plug the board in right now because it's soaking wet with isopropyl alcohol after me trying to clean it up. Um, so I'm still waiting for it to dry off, which will probably be in the next few minutes, but I just wanted to just make that quick addendum let y'all know that I did end up cooking that LED too and yes I'm aware that that one broke but I have replaced it again with a third one this one I did test fine it I did test and it does work fine so we'll go from there and I'll make sure this is all nice and cleaned up and as it turns out I was struggling entirely too much because I had the temperature on my iron set too low I set it to 654 Fahrenheit and that seemed to work just fine I'd normally solder at about 550 Fahrenheit, which, eh, let's see what that is in Celsius. So I set it to 345 Celsius. I normally solder at about 288. Um, but after setting it 
bit higher seemed to work quite a bit nicer. So yeah, that was, that was the secret. Um, yeah, there we go. I'll go ahead and, uh, let this thing dry and we'll do an actual install. Thanks for watching.